Take a cue from the market. Take a mental res day, guys. We only trade premium. The market is going to be around 200 years from now. We won't, right? We won't. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessOfTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. So, so tell me if you heard this before, right? Company A, B, C, D, doesn't make a difference what it is, right? Lowers revenues and forecasts, top and bottom line. Company A, B, C, D, earnings and revenue miss, right? Blames inflation, bl blames everything. Company misses, cuts outlook amid higher promotional activity, inflation-driven consumer, right? That's every single company. That's exactly what you have pretty much on a daily day basis. Um, the market, again, as we've been talking about, really this is starting to discount this news until the, mar the market hit a, an important level yesterday, and we'll talk about that in a second. But that's exactly what happened today. You saw uh, the, same, uh, the same headline come in from Lowe's, uh, from Target today, from Children's Place today, all pretty much saying the same thing. But this time, instead of the market uh, rallying, kind of discounting on the news like the way they did on Walmart and pretty much every other tech company uh, in the in this last quarter, the market actually went a little bit lower today. Nothing to you know, nothing to even even thought about, uh, think about. The majority of the day, I didn't even know the market was even down. But we talked about this last night. Uh, spies hit uh, the 200-day moving average, and we and we talked about it today. How the day was probably going to play out. You're probably going to have a little bit of a rest. You're probably going to have the same uh, type of a little bit of euphoria in the smaller cap names, and when you see the uh, when you see the pivots, that you'll see exactly that's it. We, we've literally we literally had a couple of pivots on quote unquote real stocks, uh, and then everything else was like small caps. But just like everything else, and, I, and I've said this all the time, uh, again for years and years and years, I used to be, I mean before pivots, I mean up to two thousand and. 10, excuse me, up to 2011, I used to swing trade. I had a book, right, of small cap stocks. And then, you know, I used to have a ton of inventory on, you know, some would be up, some would be down, some would be flat, right? But it was a book, you managed the book. And then all of a sudden, uh, around 2012, I started seeing some of my positions would go up 20 cents instantly. And I'd be like, whoa, what the hell's going on? And then all of a sudden they would crash. And I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed, but I realized there were these things called alert services where people have 5,000 people behind them. They buy a stock, goes up 10 cents, everybody sells and the stock dies. And then I realized, right? I realized around 2010, 2011, I couldn't make any more money like this anymore, right? That the small cap game, at least on the long side, I know a lot of you guys uh, trade them on the short side and it's a completely different animal. And again, if that's your thing, that's your thing. But I was a long bias trader on these stocks for years. And, and then I realized I couldn't make any money. I was very, very in a weird place. And that's kind of, you know, I went weeks and weeks and weeks and I started to develop these, what now is known the pivots. And now I basically only trade them, you know, basically about once a year. And, you know, when you have a market like this for the last, you know, a couple of weeks and you see these really big small cap moves, you start to pay attention, especially the last couple of days. And you, what you saw, this morning was another rise, right? You had this big rise on BBBY, that stock ear that we were talking about yesterday. You guys remember that ear that we talked about yesterday from 165? The damn damn thing was went three and a half today, right? But the problem is with small cap stocks is the reason why they're small cap stocks. Majority of them are pretty, well, you know, they're not the greatest companies in the world compared to Microsoft's, Apple's, and Amazon's, uh, so forth and so on. And, you know, BBBY was definitely uh, the flavor of the, the, of the choice. Uh, of the moment for the last couple of days. And the only reason I'm bringing this up, it, you know, it brought a lot of momentum into these small cap stocks. And again, we'll get to the individual pivots in a second. But after the close, uh, and, I, and by the way, I love BBBY. Okay, I love Bed Bath & Beyond. I could spend hours there. It's one of my favorite stores. Um, but the moral of the story is this was, you know, a big, big short squeeze, uh, broke out around 653, went to $30. And then after the close, I forgot what the name of the fund was, but I think they registered, I think that was the registration. I, th I think what it's called, it's, uh, RC Ventures files to form, formed 144 for nine and a half million shares of Bed Bath & Beyond, and Bed Bath & Beyond is down uh, $5 after the close, as you can see it. And 
it's probably going to stop the momentum uh, for a lot of these small cap stocks, which basically, you know, puts me in a situation I just don't care about them anymore, right? Once they stop, okay, and once there's not a mass overlong of, you know, people jumping over themselves to buy stocks at any price, they don't exist to me anymore. Because again, I know how hard it is for these stocks to move. And if there's no momentum, these names, these things, you know, for the exception of one or two that might pop out here and there, I completely remove them off my radar. And now we're kind of back into our sweet spot, right? Which is uh, beta technology uh, and everything else in between. So this is what happened yesterday. We had the spies hit the 200 day moving average. Again, really, really impressive. $40 move on the spies in three weeks. Same thing kind of what happened with the Qs. So we back tested down to the five day moving average. Why is the five day moving average? Again, this is your first time watching this broadcast. The five day moving average represents uh, short term sentiment. Who has control of the short term? And it doesn't mean this was the top. Now we're going to roll over and go lower. It doesn't mean that. But again, we look for clues. Again, I trade from both sides of the market. As much as this was a phenomenal bull market run, I'm not naive. I get it. I mean, we could get pulled at any time. So now we're watching for tomorrow this 424.50 uh, level. You see this 424 level? If the if the spies start building below uh, 424.50, then yes, you're going to bring it. You're probably going to bring in more selling. And no, nobody's saying we're going back to the lows. But again, we take a day by day, trade by trade you know, sentiment by sentiment. And the point is the sentiment is still super duper bullish. But if we lose uh, 424.50, and this is a number you should really jot down uh, for tomorrow's session, because if we start losing this 424.50 level, then yes, we will get continued back tests. And then you have room all the way down to where? You got room to what, 4, 421, right? So then, you know, you still got five points down uh, in the S&Ps. You know, it's, it's not a small move. So you have to kind of prepare on both sides of the market. And when I looked at, you know, when I looked at my research this morning, I was this, this afternoon, was that when I was charting? You know, predominantly, predominantly, not all, but predominantly the setups that I had for tomorrow were definitely to the sell side. I definitely have some long-sided setups that I like, okay? I think uh, Tesla is right in the middle of the range. Uh, it's not a long, it's not a short, but it, it might be coming up to a, a sweet spot somewhere in the near future. Again, we started seeing uh, some deep out of the money 950, 960 weekly calls come in. Maybe that sparks it up. Maybe that doesn't. But the point is, again, guys, take the tape. Don't be naive and to think the market goes one way. It, it's going to go that way forever. Okay. Uh, we, as much as I am, am pretty much, you know, I don't know how much more I could have been, uh, how much I've been pushing the, the envelope uh, above the 50 day moving average on the long side. But again, we also know, hey, we hit the 200 day. There's no guarantee we will get above, above the 200 day ever again. Maybe we will, maybe we won't. Obviously, any close above 432 on the SPYs starts a really, really more uh, aggressive leg up. But for the, for the meantime, from the day to day basis, we definitely want to keep an eye on the 424.50 level tomorrow on the spies, because if that gets lost, that is there's about $5 uh, worth of downside. Uh, same thing on the Qs. Right, same thing on the Qs here. Qs had a nice little run, didn't quite make it to the 200 day, but still 40 points in three weeks is pretty good, right? Today you can see it, it held the 10 day moving average. Same thing goes for the Qs. If the Qs start losing uh, six, uh, 326, uh, you know, 326, this whole 10 day moving average, and yeah, we got another, what, three, four points of downside to go. So again, that's when all, those, all that research for tomorrow, if it gets confirmed, yeah, we will get some pretty good uh, shorts on deck. But again, you don't anticipate, right? You don't anticipate. All we can do is get prepared. That's it. All we can do is get prepared. And once we're prepared, all we need to wait is for confirmation. Are you going to trade everything perfectly? Absolutely not, right? You have no losses every day. You have, you know, you, you, have, you, have, you have stocks that just fail on you every day. It happens, right? But the most important part is you're prepared. So at least if the stock fails that level, whether it's a long, uh, a long or a short, you, you know how important that level is. You just get out, right? Take your little loss, take break even up a little bit, down a little bit, but get the hell out of Dodge until you get it, until you get more clarity. And that's kind of where we are uh, set up for tomorrow. The greatest gift you can give yourself, number one, is be an adult, right? Be an adult, stay patient, obviously processes everything in this business and give yourself time, right? You don't need to trade every single day. Not every single day is going to be your sweet spot, right? Beta today rested for the exception of several names, you know, that, you know, went down for a little bit of cash flow 
it was a res day for the market. And now we kind of know, you know, we kind of know this 10 day is kind of a big deal. So if the market confirms the 10 day below uh, 326 more on the queues, yeah, we'll, we'll have some more sellers bias. But the one thing that you have to do as a trader, as an aspiring trader, whatever the case may be, whatever your label is on you, have an open mind. You got to trade both sides of the market. Don't start feeding yourself and, and start feeding your head about, you know, the Fed minutes were aggressively uh, going to work on cutting inflation, whatever the hell the term is. I'm not smart enough to understand that. There's a million different websites. You can, they can read you the, you know, read you the Fed minutes. I have no idea what the hell they said. It doesn't make a difference to me. All I know is everybody's complaining and blah, 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 and nobody's happy. The market's so good. When is ever going to is anybody ever going to be happy, right? Smile. Life is not that serious, right? So whatever the hell the Fed minutes said, it's nothing new. It's the same jargon. Market really didn't, you know, really didn't react one way or another. You had a half a percent uh, decline both in the Dow, the S&P, 1% decline in the NASDAQ. But again, if you're a bull, especially if you're a bull in the last three weeks, who the hell is complaining, right? But again, it's super important uh, to trade both sides of the market. And this is a very important part. And this is kind of what we talk about the mental health side of trading, right? Like I trade beta, you know, Tesla, Amazon, th these are my stocks. This is where, you know, this is it. Like this is my holy grail. Um, so when they rest, I rest. It's so important that you get your, you get your cues from, from the market, okay? Because if you're trading Tesla and you see you trading a $3 channel, that's mental drainage. You're burning a lot of mental equity and you're, you're, you're getting fried. You don't need to lose money to get fried. It's a very, very important point. So whatever your style of trading is, right? Really understand if your stocks are not in play, what I mean, if your process is not being spotlight and channels are contracting instead of channels are expanding, take a cue from the market. Take a mental res day, guys. We only trade premium. The market is going to be around 200 years from now. We won't, right? We won't. We'll be in a, a far way better place in this crazy life, but the market will be around. So while we're still in earth and we're all you know, trying to navigate this crazy life of ours, we have to wait because if we don't wait and you just trade every single day, exactly the same way, exactly the same speed, I promise you, your career is going to shrink faster than me coming out of the ocean. And that's what she said. So moral of the story is, look, we know our levels for tomorrow right? For the cues, for the spies we talked about, a lot of stocks are still resting. You know, can, can, can these small cap stocks probably have had their last day or so? You know, maybe, maybe this BBBY news, um, you know, really spooks a lot of the small cap traders and that market dies. So if you have that market dying with everything else resting, the value then turns to the downside. And the most important part is we could take advantage of those ranges. But again, you have to know your ranges don't guess, don't anticipate, let the ranges confirm. So let's talk about today, right? Let's talk about today. So here was the very, I mean, if you notice, we, we literally had two stocks that you guys probably are familiar with, right? Tesla cash flow only set up 908. If it gets down, it should get down to 903, 900. It got right down to 900. I mean, that was basically it. It was a very, very tight channel. The funny thing is I actually lost a dollar on Tesla today because it was just so tight. I couldn't, it couldn't break down. So, um, which is which is absolutely nothing, but whatever it is, what it is. Uh, but but again, Tesla is definitely setting up for the next couple of days, both long and short. If it starts losing today's range, then hey, we might have something working here. If it starts taking out today's range, hey, we might have to some work in here. But again, don't fall in love with the stock. Fall in love with technical analysis. TDOC, just a cash flow move. 37, 3750 big support level. 3750 day support if it builds below can flush. And it, and it really does show you how how strong this market is, right? You know, they got downgraded by Goldman Sachs. You figured downgraded by Goldman Sachs, the stock would be down five, right? The stock went down like 40 cents or so. Then it paused and blah, blah, blah. Finally, you know, broke below the 50-day moving average. You know, went down like a dollar and change. But the point is, again, you need fear for stocks to get down. Maybe this is finally the first start of, hey, small caps are, are you know, maybe they stop. Uh, maybe the stocks need more rest. Maybe this is like the first inning, but we don't know, right? We don't know. So that, that's my point. You know, you're just trying to take one pivot at a time, take cash flow and move along. Because again, you're not going to get these massive channels if everything's in a massive uptrend. So again, TDOC, you know, a little cash flow here. Uh, EA never confirmed. TTCF never confirmed. WRB. Look, look at these symbols, right? Just to give you an idea of what kind of day does they, start, like, you know, what kind of research there was. Look at these symbols. I, I find myself almost saying, Dan, did you make up these symbols as you go along? right? TTCF, WRBY, AEY, none of these stocks, did anything. This was a nice little move, right? A CGC, somebody yesterday came out, it wasn't the September's, it was, um, it was a typo, 
It was the Januarys. Somebody came out yesterday. They bought the January 15 calls. The stock's at $4, right? So $4 needs to build on uh, CGC. They started coming. Uh, they started coming for uh, the four and a half and five dollar weeklies. Uh, yeah, weeklies. And a nice move. It went from four to four thirty. Right? Not a bad move. Not a bad move at all. So again, small cap stocks were, were playing out today. RGS, another little one. Uh, one thirty six needs to build. Right? One thirty six needs to build. Again, look, look what we're talking about here. Right? For all you guys who have been watching this broadcast for a long, long time, when was the last time you saw all these weird-ass symbols, right? We're always talking about the same stocks, but, you know, again, a pivot is a pivot is a pivot, right? What's the difference? So here's the 136, took out the 136, traded to the high of the day, 150. Yeah, listen, if it gets one more day, can it get to 165? Who the hell knows, right? I'm still holding this uh, little OSCR. I'm still kind of stuck in from, from yesterday, but whatever. I'll give it one more day. I did hold yesterday's. Uh, lows today. Okay, we'll see. We're not trying to recreate the wheel here, but the most important part is, guys, like I say every single day, appreciate the journey, learn how to smile, and most important thing is don't take everything seriously, right? Don't put a lot of pressure on yourself to figure things out. I see a new, lot of new traders trying to figure things out in the first two years. The same thing, they, they, they're they almost trying to put in the journey of somebody like me for 23, almost you know 23 years plus, and say to yourself, well, I can't, if I can't figure out this business in the first year, it's, it's a waste of time. It's not. It's just you're on the first leg of hopefully a long, long career. So, guys, stay blessed. Have a great day tomorrow. Uh, see what we got. See how much value we get. And with God's help, I'll see you guys all tomorrow. Take care.